You likely don't remember me, which is fine. I'm forgettable, IRL, so I am accustomed to that. But some time ago, I posted here concerning troubling dreams, wherein I visited the foundry. Or refinery. I know nothing about industrial buildings, why I might dream of one every night and where I'm getting the imagery is a mystery to me. Literally every night without fail, I appear in the same spot, curled up on the floor of what appears to be an abandoned and decaying industrial building. At first, it was novel, then became distressing, but while I still talk about it in therapy, it's no longer an unwelcome experience. Instead, I regard it as a sort of second home. There's nothing especially welcoming about it, but in exploring the foundry, I've discovered the layout is persistent, and anything I break or move remains that way in the next dream. Additionally, the machinery makes no sense. I don't know much about how such machinery works, which is why I figured this was the case, but I'm not an idiot. I know what a gear does and what a piston does. But in the dream, the machinery is assembled as though by someone with no conception of what machinery is in general. Gears working against each other, belts driving wheels, which drive belts that drive wheels back to the original wheel, with no apparent purpose. It became difficult to accept that my own subconscious was coming up with it. At the recommendation of my therapist, I began mapping it on paper. And taking note of anomalies. For example, on some items, there are labels or other blurbs of text in a language that I don't recognize. I can see abstract shapes while dreaming, but they change as I move the object and look at it from different angles, and I cannot clearly recall any individual character when I awaken. In every dream, I am wearing whatever I had on when I went to bed. I began to experiment by stripping off my clothing in the dream. Of course, when I woke up, I was still wearing that clothing, I don't know what I expected to happen. Once I began mapping and experimenting, a new element of the dream appeared. One or more people are following and monitoring me. I would initially never see them, I would only hear their footsteps on walkways above me, fleeing when I try to chase. There is light coming through windows, but it cannot be natural sunlight. It is a rich shade of sickly orange, and while shadows cast by the sun are all perpendicular to one another, shadows cast by light coming in through the windows are at angles that suggest the light source is much closer. I have tried on many occasions to wipe clean the dirty windows so I can see where the light comes from or to break them with rocks and rusted tools, but neither works. All the while, I hear the shifting feet of watchers lingering nearby. At any rate, the last time I posted here, you requested that I learn 3D software so that I could provide a map of the area I have explored so far. I apologize if this is crude, but it's the best I can do with what I've learned in that time. I have color-coded the various relevant portions so I can refer to them if you have questions. The yellow, rounded room with the tall windows is where I wake up. The green room contains the rows of machinery, the orange things. The blue cylinder is a shaft containing a spiral staircase, with several decks at intervals on the way down. These rounded, carved-out rooms, seemingly made of concrete or very smoothly cut rock, contain cages all around the outer wall. Sometimes sound or movement comes from them, but they are dark. I cannot see what they contain, and they are locked. One is open and one is empty. For a long time, I thought the spiral staircase was endless. I shortened it in the 3D map for the sake of showing everything in one picture. It continues for such a distance that unless I devote the entire duration of my time in the dream to descending it, I don't reach the bottom before waking up. For that reason, I haven't explored much at the very bottom beyond what you see here. The staircase ends in what looks like some type of old-fashioned office. A rusting metal chair sits at a wooden desk with a few filing cabinets to one side, looking out over an abyss. Outside, it becomes apparent that the room hangs by the concrete shaft containing the stairwell from the roof of a massive subterranean cavern. Outside, there are a few platforms hanging from the cavern roof by chains, with wooden walkways between them. Below, rather than darkness, there are what look like slowly moving grey storm clouds. I have thrown stuff down into that abyss, but I never hear an impact. Nor can I see any walls in the cavern. The ceiling of it seems to stretch on for miles, receding into darkness. Here is another shot of the hanging building in the cavern, which gives a better sense of scale. The platforms originally had some rotting cardboard boxes and tools on them, all of which I have long since dropped off the edge trying to get a sense of how deep the cavern is, to no avail. The clouds below look exactly as you might expect storm clouds to look from an airplane. 
I am powerfully curious to know what is below them, but too frightened to let myself drop from one of the hanging platforms in order to find out. It isn't clear what would happen. I used to have normal dreams, and some nights I had no dreams at all. This just started all of a sudden one night and has continued ever since, never letting up. If it were someplace pleasant and representative of my desires, it would be explicable. But if I feel anything while there, it is cold, weary, and slightly nauseous. There is a sense that something is wrong with the place. The angles, the colors, the nonsense machinery. Every electric light in there emits the exact sickly orange light that also comes in through the windows, presumably from outside. There is very little variation in color, from grays to very subdued browns. It feels like decay, everywhere. Sometimes I try to fix the machinery, usually without result since it was apparently never designed to work in the first place. But occasionally I can rearrange it into something that at least moves or makes noise when activated. I feel most intensely watched while doing this. Like my observers, I'm trying to learn what the machinery means to me and how it's supposed to be assembled. My therapist is too confident in her interpretations. And they are flattering to an uncomfortable degree. She believes that the incompetently designed abstract do-nothing machinery represents my frustration with an inefficiently organized and operated society, and my struggles to fix some of it and make it work, to whatever small degree, represent struggles in my day-to-day -day life to change the order of things for the better. This is entirely, in my view, a product of her fondness for me. She is too impressed by what is objectively a pretty dull person, except for these strange nighttime escapades. Perhaps she feels sorry for me. No, I have never tried to write anything in my dreams. I apologize for the delay, I was having trouble getting anything through your CAPTCHA system. It has been a long time since I posted here. I can try writing. I expect some anticlimactic results, like when I experimented with clothing. The experience seems designed to thwart any effort to pry it apart and see it from the outside. Literally, with regards to my efforts to get outside of the building. I have this lingering, deep-seated suspicion that if I could see what's outside, it would answer many of my questions about that place. The parts are not the same from machine to machine. They are, in some places, similar but never of identical dimensions. The tools are seemingly random in shape. It isn't obvious that they're even designed to do anything. I have searched for similar tools online and found nothing. Some change shape slightly if I look away, even for a moment, then look back. I have managed to use them, awkwardly, to effect minor repairs only because some are coincidentally shaped such that I can use them as levers or are badly fitting wrenches. Some implements, found mainly on the cage levels, aren't tools, so far as I can tell. They have sharp jutting points or blades. They might be weapons, but they have hinges, handles, and all the trappings of tools. Not all can even be used safely without injuring the user. Who designed them, and what are they for? I feel like the answers are outside the building. But the harder I try to escape, the further away it becomes. Something always prevents it. There's this strong sense that it's a charade, an inward-facing bubble of illusion. Like the set of a television show. If I could find some hole in it, somewhere that the builder forgot to patch up and get outside, I'm certain I'd see it for what it really is. If there is a world outside of it, I cannot imagine it will simply be a city, the countryside, or anywhere intuitive. The cavern seems to preclude that, as does the deep tungsten light coming in through the tall windows at angles all wrong for sunlight. Perhaps it's all underground. Or perhaps there is some land outside of it, with something other than the sun bathing it in that nauseating orange light. I'm desperate to find out, and in the past few nights, every effort has gone towards probing the furthest reaches of the building for some escape. So far, nothing. Have you ever tried holding onto some object, like a tool, until you woke up, to see if you could bring it with you out of the dream? Yes, with the same result as the clothing experiment. For a time, I accepted that as proof positive that it was in fact just a very persistent, recurring dream. I moved from that to taking very seriously the possibility that I was losing my mind. Following some soul-searching and self-testing, I determined I am still, in fact, sane, just rattled by an unusual experience that won't stop. There's something wrong with it. Little things, like there aren't any plants, in a lot of these urbex photos of abandoned industrial buildings, there's grass, moss, whatever. Not in the dream. No plants, no rats, no living things other than myself. 
little things like that, and the chairs aren't all the same size. Some are small enough to not quite be plausibly child-sized but still difficult to sit in. Others are large enough that you must hop to get onto them. Often skewed at a slight angle, like slightly melted. Like the tools, none of them are right. I can't believe this is, or is a reflection of, any actual industrial building that ever existed. Didn't you say you saw a creature previously? The boy in the overalls. It was exciting when I finally caught him. I believed he was the source of the footsteps I'd been hearing. But even when holding him down, trying to get a look at his face, and discovering only a smooth, featureless expanse of skin where it should be, smooth as an egg, even then I heard the footsteps and shuffling of nearby observers. He has also been following and watching me, but he isn't one of them. I haven't seen them yet. I think he used to be in the one cage that wasn't locked, partway down the stairwell. He got out, or someone let him out. Possibly that's what's in the rest of the cages. This is a close approximation of the color of the light. From outside and from the bulbs. Why this color? I thought it was grime on the bulbs or that they were tinted. They aren't tinted, and the glass is dingy but clear. All light, regardless of source, is the same gross orange. The only respite from it is darkness. Sometimes I turn off the lights in the stairwell just to escape that color. That was before I found the cages. Now I don't want to be in that stairwell with the lights off. I can't entertain the thought of being in that cage for more than a moment. That's where the boy in the overalls came from, and I have an unwelcome suspicion that I am intended to take his place. I avoid it now, but it is always on the back of my mind. Also perform experiments on the boy. See if he or she is in pain. Most likely not. If so, try to cut him a mouth. He's scared. He writhed under me and made muffled, distressed noises through the skin. There was no jaw movement when he made those noises. If I cut into that smooth face, I'm not certain there'd be teeth and a tongue under it. Perhaps just an equally smooth, featureless skull. I think he knows what is wrong with this place. It could be that he was changed to prevent him from telling. I've also thought that he might have been someone else who had this dream and that I might end up like him. If I could see into the cages, it might answer that. I tried rigging up a light on a cord, but the shadow inside has substance and volume, like a mist or a cloud. The light only penetrates so far. I can hear something, a grinding and a dull, muffled moaning. I can see hints of motion in the shadow, but nothing more. I hate that part of the building and don't want to visit it without good reason. You just said there were no living things, and now you're saying there was a kid? Why didn't you bring this kid up from the start? I meant plants and animals. There is neither the growth typical of abandoned buildings or the rats you'd normally find there. The boy is not clearly a normal human being and may be having something like a hallucination. His anatomy is implausible. There are no orifices through which he could breathe, for example. Like the machines, there are obvious problems with the logic of how heat works. I wish there were some way to communicate, the writing idea is novel. I will try that tonight. I'm concerned that if I spend the money on an old camera, I'll just be thwarted again. The recurring theme is that of a carrot dangled in front of me and then yanked away every time I reach for it. This place defies every effort to pin it down, extract details from it beyond what I'm apparently permitted to see, and map it out. At times I resign myself to this, and at other times I am consumed with frustration and the drive to find some way outside to pry answers from this place. When I am content with the mystery of it, I am, for some reason, able to venture further and see more. I feel like I am being punished for trying to color outside the lines. If you can supposedly take things into this world, I have tried that. In both directions, in the dream, I was holding a tool until I woke up. While awake and in bed, clutching my notebook and trying to take it with me. Only my clothes make it through. I think what is being transferred here is my outer appearance, not objects near or on me. Like a projection. I have no strong religious convictions but some degree of spiritual feeling. I have never fitted into any organized conception of spiritual belief, I have no concrete ideas about beings or places, my only experience with that sort of thing is this foundry. I can't say whether it's supernatural. It defies every effort to prove it's anything other than a dream, while simultaneously showing uncanny, impossible to ignore signs that it is a real and persistent location that I somehow visit while unconscious.
I would like to see what my brain looks like to an fMRI machine while I'm there. I'd volunteer to be studied, but I doubt anybody with access to that equipment would take me seriously enough to go through with it. If you change something in your surroundings, like, for example, scratching something on the wall, does it last until your next visit? And anything I break or move remains that way in the next dream. It is, in fact, persistent. Everything is, each night, the way I left it the prior night. That's one aspect that makes it difficult to accept it as a recurring dream. Why is it so specific? Why the particular unusual properties that are consistent throughout the structure? Why that color of light from every source? Why no bathrooms? Why are there no exit signs? The drawers have no handles. It's like it was built by someone who only had descriptions of factories, refineries, and so on to work from but didn't actually understand what they were for. I need to see what's outside to know how much any of my suspicions are accurate. Leave something organic. Probably some small amount of food. I'm curious if it'll rot until your next visit. I can try to bring food with me, but I don't expect I'll have any more success with food than with any other object I've tried to transfer. Is there some removable part of my body, like hair or nails, that would show visible signs of decay over time? I'm not going to cut off a finger or something. I have injured myself, just cuts, in an attempt to see if there would be a fresh wound or at least a scar when I woke up, and there wasn't. But the pain was absolutely real. I can hurt myself there and feel it exactly as if I were awake, hence my reluctance to drop from the suspended platforms in the cavern. I have no idea what might happen if I die there. What about feces or vomit? I never feel the need to eat or defecate there, but it stands to reason that I should be able to if I try. I never feel the need to eat or defecate there, but it stands to reason that I should be able to if I try. Oh, for heaven's sake, what is it? It's the test animal, it took a poop in the maze, we can't interfere in any way. Or it would ruin the purity of the test, listen to you. Fine, but it's going to be awkward showing students footage of this with a big stinking human turd right, in the middle of the shot. Test administered to humans, time to completion of the puzzle, did not complete. Result, a human took a dump on the floor. Conclusion, not sentient. Recommend extermination prior to the settlement of Earth. When you undressed yourself in the dream, did you find your clothes where you left them the next time, or were they gone? Gone. I did think of taking them off every time and building a gradually larger pile. Anything to try and provoke some kind of intervention from whoever watches me while I'm there. They might have been taken away and burned after I awoke, or somehow returned to my body, as of course I woke up in those same clothes. I could catch the boy in the overalls, but so far I cannot corner the source of the other footsteps. It's more than one person, and they move as a group, but I cannot so much as catch a glimpse of them. There are so many things I want to ask. Also, try to polish the metal with your clothes and use it as a makeshift mirror to see your reflection. I did this once. I won't do it again. The least rusted metal surface I could find was a boiler. To my knowledge, boilers aren't usually made of reflective metals, but this one was reflective enough when wiped clean with some spit and my sleeve that I could see myself reflected in it. My face was featureless, identical to the boy's overalls. It's wrong, or the reflection was distorted. I can see while I'm there, so obviously I have working eyes. I don't want to try again, I don't want to see that. It's enough to know I have eyes. I can speak, so I know I have a mouth. When I touch my face, I can feel my mouth and eyes. I don't need to see my reflection. I'm not doing that again, it isn't necessary. If this is an experiment, I'm betting everything that it's to test the lengths you will go to in order to satisfy your curiosity. That includes experimenting on the boy and self-harm like cutting off a limb or jumping to your death. That's either the success or failure condition of the test. And the only surefire way to bring it to a conclusion. I'm afraid to try this, but at the same time, what you say makes a lot of sense. But so did an earlier suggestion that I try to create order and symmetry by returning the boy to his cage. Both assume it's a game or a puzzle with some way to win or lose. That could also be a red herring. What are you seeing the therapist about? The dreams, originally. But she's part of a university training program for psychology students. She isn't properly qualified, but it's free. I am no longer distressed by the dreams, nor do I still think I am losing my mind, but that doesn't mean I'm okay with it. 
You have some sense of normalcy and continuity in your life where nothing obviously abnormal happens in your day-to-day -day experience. But it happens to me every night. We aren't made to cope with that. We can handle short bursts of it, but when it's there night after night and there's no escape, the anxiety makes it difficult to think clearly. Sometimes I get locked in these patterns of thought where I don't want to remember being in the cage room or looking at my reflection, but I am pulled back to them over and over, like a computational loop, like having to return there every night. Can you draw one of the rooms up in detail, not too much, just to understand what it looks like, if you could? The room with the machines would be cool, from what you would see if you walked in from the door. I can try that for the next thread. I am not a very good artist. I've been choosing pictures that are as close as I can find. But yeah, if you can tolerate poor drawing skills, I'll do that for the next thread. Based on suggestions, I also intend to draw something with my finger in the grime on a window or to use something sharp to carve words into a wall. I'm curious to know whether the words I write will be impossible to visually comprehend or if it's only the language already written in some places in the foundry. It has taken a long time to come to terms with this. I am just now at the point where I've made peace with the knowledge that, based on what I've seen, this will never end and that each night, regardless of what I want, I have to go back there. It is not so much seeing my reflection that I can't handle on top of all that, it's what some in this thread have suggested that it means with regards to the cage and the boy. I won't lie, your attitude is weirder than the experience you're describing here. She said acceptance and adjusting to my new reality would diminish the anxiety. She was right. I have no reason not to trust her advice. I'm so tired. It's 5 AM. I've put this off longer than usual. Once I stayed up for as long as I could, it wrecked me. And it was a useless attempt at defiance. In the end, I still woke up in that room. So long as I need sleep, I won't be able to stay away longer than a few days. Soon, I'll be there again. I'll open my eyes and see the windows, then the staircase. The full extent of my power to avoid it is caffeine pills and other drugs that can delay this for maybe 72 hours. But it's futile. It's like eating a calorie-restricted diet just to gain a few years. You will still inevitably die, your current course of action won't take you anywhere. You're accepting of being an accidental prisoner for the rest of your life. I know. I am willing to try your experiments. That way, at least each night isn't identical to the last. That is my small act of dissent. I apologize if it's underwhelming. It's the most I can manage. Hey stalker. Hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you. Give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.